rounding. Not all students get it. So how can we teach it in a way that will make sense? I'll tell you right after the intro. Hi, my name's Tom Moore, and in this video, we're going to have a look at how to teach rounding so that students are able to better conceptualize what it is that they're learning. But before we do, let's have a bit of a chat about the research that's out there. Joe Bowler, a world-renowned expert in teaching mathematics and developing growth mindsets in students, has said that whenever you're learning and using both sides of the brain, you're more likely to remember what it is that you actually learn. So in other words, if we get students to draw or make models or construct things whilst learning the logical side of maths, then they're more likely to remember what it is that we're trying to teach them. Now, before we go any further, don't forget the lesson plan that comes with this video can be found in the description. So let's get stuck into the lesson and have a look at just how to teach rounding so that it makes sense to students. Now, quite often students don't understand rounding due to misconceptions that they have when working with place value. Using hands-on materials such as MAB can assist in developing students' understanding in this area. Let's use that now to have a look at how to round. Let's have a look at 42 for example. Now we know that 42 is made up of four tens and two ones and it's at this point that I would get students to make this number using MAB. Now as you can see, of course, we've got four tens and two ones so therefore 42 would actually be closer to four tens than what it would be to five tens because you can actually see that. And the same thing works as well where if we were comparing it to 100. So if I was rounding to the closest 100, we can see that 42 is actually closer to zero hundreds than what it is to 100. So when rounding to tens, of course, it's going to be 40. When rounding to hundreds, it's going to be zero. And you can see that through the model. So the key is to get students to make this model so that they can actually see whether or not to round up or round down based on how big the actual number is. And they've got something concrete there to actually have a look at. Now it's also worth getting students to do this a number of times so that they can start to see what numbers actually round up versus what numbers round down. So what about teaching how to round when dealing with fives? For example, 45, or maybe 50, or 500. It can be quite difficult for students to understand this. And this is how I go about it. Now you can see here we've got the four tens and the five ones just to represent 45. Now this does actually look like it's going to be closer to four tens, but we know, of course, that you need to actually round up. Now the reason for this is because when we're dealing with place value, things or place value starts at anything that ends in a zero. Let's have a think about this for a second. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. As soon as I bring in the 10th piece, I can actually trade the 10 of these for one of those. So the very first thing that I need to consider is that place value starts with anything that ends in a zero. Now I also like to bring in a number chart to represent what's occurring here. If we have a look, my number chart starts off with zero and then it goes up all the way to nine because that's what we have when representing the ones. As soon as 10 comes into play, we then start on a new line. Now, when we get to 45, it's quite obvious that 45 is going to be closer to the end of this line than what it is to this one. So therefore, we round 45 up to turn it into 50. And once again, this comes back to place value starting with anything that ends in a zero. Now when teaching rounding using decimal numbers, for example, tenths, hundredths, and thousandths, it's important that we move away from using MAB as our model. The temptation might be to call this one, this one one tenth, and this one 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 hundredth. But this actually confuses students because they've come to learn that this is one, this is 10, and this is 100. So what do we do? Well, you can head down to Bunnings and grab yourself a whole lot of PVC pipe and some washers to help demonstrate this. As you can see here, I have one washer. When I line up 10 of them, those can be essentially 10 one thousandths, or in other words, one one hundredth. And if I make 10 of those and put them all in line, that will make one tenth. And by getting 10 of these, and lining them up, you can see here that that will be one. So we have one, one tenth, one one hundredth, and one one thousandth. 
And we can use this model in the same way that we've used MAB to help us teach rounding involving decimal numbers. So there you have it. We've had a look at how to teach rounding using a hands-on model. Now you can also go and play games and other things along those lines, but it's important that students conceptually understand why it is that rounding works the way it does. Now don't forget there's a lesson plan that you can download in the description, and of course like, comment and subscribe. And my name's been Tom Moore, we'll see you next time.